So thank you to the organizers for the invitation to speak about how to approach the patient with a BRAF mutant tumor. So this is my topic outline, and after the first three topics, the rest of my presentation will focus on caring for patients with BRAF V600E mutated metastatic colorectal cancers. To begin, because colorectal cancer is so common, it is estimated that more patients with BRAF mutated colorectal cancer versus melanoma die worldwide each year. And the features that are most uh, predictive of a BRAF V600E mutation are a right-sided colon primary, female gender, and mucinous histology. Additionally, BRAF V600E mutated tumors are often hypermethylated. About a third have microsatellite instability, and these tumors are typically RAS wild type. Regarding pattern of disease spread, Oligometastatic liver and or lung disease is uncommon, whereas ascites and peritoneal disease are very prevalent, and there's also an increased incidence of distant lymphadenopathy and brain metastases. This pattern of disease spread poses important challenges for radiographic uh, evaluation of treatment response. So pictured here are two of my clinical trial patients where you can see that the, the bulk of disease was not measurable per resist. And these tumors are associated with a poor response to standard therapies and also a, a median overall survival of about a year compared to about three years in patients with BRAF and KRAS wild type colorectal cancers. I want, as an aside, to take a moment to discuss non-V600 BRAF mutations. These are present in about 2% of colorectal cancers. Most commonly, these are in codon 594. And importantly, codon 594 and 596 mutations are KRAS activity impaired. So these mutations are associated with a favorable prognosis and opposite features as compared to BRAF V600 mutations, including frequent KRAS mutations. Conversely, mutations at codon five, or, sorry, 601 or 597 have similar features to BRAF V600, including poor prognosis. However, these codon 600 and 597 mutations are activating the, the dimerized form of BRAF, and so next generation inhibitors, the so-called paradox uh, breakers, may be required for response. I'll also take a moment to discuss the implications of BRAF V600E in stage three colorectal cancer. So unlike uh, microsatellite instability, which has an increased incidence in early stage colorectal cancer as compared to metastatic colorectal cancer, there is a similar rate of BRAF mutations by stage at about 8% across stages. And the rate of recurrence after stage three BRAF uh, wild type and V600E mutated colorectal cancer is similar. However, among patients with BRAF V600E microsatellite stable colorectal cancers whose stage three tumors do recur, there is a, an associated shorter disease-free interval and a markedly decreased overall survival after recurrence. That's the red curve on the graph. So in approaching the patient with stage three BRAF mutated colorectal cancer, if microsatellite stable, I initiate close surveillance. If microsatellite unstable, I consider enrollment in an adjuvant immunotherapy trial, such as the cooperative group atomic study, which is comparing full fox alone to full fox plus atezolizumab. The remainder of my talk will focus on caring for patients with BRAF V600E mutated metastatic colorectal cancer. And in fit patients, I always consider first-line chemotherapy with full foxiri, with or without bevacizumab, based on the TRIBE data suggesting an improved overall survival with more aggressive induction chemotherapy. 
And my main reason for choosing fulfoxiri with bevacizumab is the importance of early disease control in this population where we may have only one shot on goal. So it's been shown that about a third of patients with BRAF V600E mutations progress rapidly through first-line fulfox. And in an analysis of a large series of clinical trial patients, only about a third of patients with BRAF V600E mutations went on to receive second-line chemotherapy, compared to about half of patients without a BRAF mutation. The other reason that Fulfoxiri is sometimes considered is as conversion therapy for patients with initially unresectable colorectal cancer. So I want to take a moment to discuss metastatectomy. BRAF V600E mutations are underrepresented in series of colorectal cancer patients who undergo liver resection. And this is not surprising given the pattern and pace of disease has spread. And overall survival after metastatectomy is lower in patients with BRAF mutations compared to patients with BRAF wild-type colorectal cancer. However, among patients with BRAF V600E mutations, survival is better among those patients who undergo surgical resection of metastases compared to those patients who don't. So my recommendation is to uh, use especially careful patient selection in this population, including consideration of doing laparoscopy prior to any major operation, as these patients may have occult peritoneal disease that is not visualized on imaging. In patients with microsatellite unstable tumors, I recommend early use of checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy. The waterfall plot here is from the Checkmate 142 study with nivolumab, and you can see that the distribution of responses in patients with BRAF mutated tumors, the blue bars, is similar to that of patients with BRAF wild type tumors, the gray bars. And now I will summarize results of the main clinical trials, including BRAF inhibitors, starting with vemurafenib monotherapy. And unlike in melanoma, where vemurafenib alone produced an impressive 81% response rate, just barely one patient responded with BRAF-mutated colorectal cancer. So we conclude that BRAF inhibitors alone are not sufficient for treatment of patients with BRAF V600E colorectal cancer. And it was found that in colorectal cancer, addition of a BRAF inhibitor releases negative feedback, enabling activation of a bypass loop that uh, activates signaling of the MAP kinase pathway through MEK and ERK. So this led to a combination trial with the BRAF inhibitor dabrafenib and the MEK inhibitor trametinib with a modest improvement in response rates. Preclinical data also suggested that targeting of EGFR may be required to overcome resistance to BRAF and MEK inhibitor combinations. And this led to a series of studies looking at different combinations of the BRAF inhibitor dabrafenib, the MEK inhibitor trametinib, and the EGFR-targeted antibody panitumumab, from which we, cons we, can, um, we conclude that a BRAF inhibitor is important as we saw the worst outcomes and also um, increased skin toxicity with the combination of trametinib and panitumumab. It also appeared that three drugs may be better than two as response rates and progression-free survival were improved with the triplet combination. However, durability of disease control was a challenge with transient responses that were not confirmed on a subsequent CT scan and modest progression-free survival. In another study that uh, looked at a more potent BRAF inhibitor, encorafenib, with cetuximab and with or without a PI3 kinase inhibitor, 
it was notable that with the encorafenib plus cetuximab combination, we, it was seen that the confirmed response rate and progression-free progression survival matched that observed with the dibrafenib plus trametinib and panitubumab triple combination therapy. So encorafenib plus cetuximab is the subject of further study, but first I want to discuss SWOG 1406, which was the first randomized controlled trial for this population. And in this intergroup study, uh, patients were randomized to receive a standard of care chemotherapy with uh, cetuximab and arinotecan, or an experimental therapy with vemurafenib added. And patients on the standard of care arm could cross over to receive vemurafenib at progression. The primary objective of this study was progression-free survival. And S1406 was a positive study with a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival with vemurafenib, cetuximab, and arinotecan. Of note, the median PFS of 4.3 months, again, matches what was seen with dibrafenib plus trametinib and panitubumab, and also with encorafenib and cetuximab. In contrast, the median progression-free survival on the standard therapy arm was only two months. And durability of disease control remained a challenge with this strategy, and a decision was made not to file for FDA approval. Still, given just how poorly these patients do with standard of care chemotherapy, the combination of arinotecan with either cetuximab or panitubumab and vimurafenib was added to the 2018 NCCN guidelines as a subsequent therapy option for this patient population. Meanwhile, the Beacon CRC uh, phase three study of encorafenib plus cetuximab with or without the MEK inhibitor binimetinib uh, being, is being compared to a control arm with either fulfoxiri plus cetuximab or arinotecan plus cetuximab. And the safety lead-in for this study is complete, and the randomized portion of the study will have 615 patients, or 205 patients per arm, making this by far the largest clinical trial for this population. The primary endpoint is overall survival of the triplet therapy as compared to the control arm. And the study is open at over 250 sites worldwide and is expected to complete enrollment late this year. The initial results of the safety lead-in were first presented at ASCO GI in San Francisco in January, and these were results in the first 30 patients treated with the triplet combination. The overall response rate was 48%. 45% of patients had stable disease. There were two patients who were not available for response, and no patients had primary progressive disease. And the preliminary estimate of progression-free survival was a median of eight months, roughly doubling what we had seen in previous studies. And the median duration of response was 5.4 months. And I look forward to an update on the safety lead-in at 11.30 tomorrow in this room. And if the randomized portion of this trial recapitulates what we've seen so far in the safety lead-in, I expect that the combination of encorafenib, cetuximab, and binimetinib will become an approved, an approved standard of care for BRAF V600E mutated colorectal cancer. Regarding resistance biomarkers, we found that BRAF V600E mutant allele fraction and cell-free DNA correlated better with radiographic response than did change in CEA. And mechanisms of acquired resistance to BRAF inhibitor containing combinations seem to all converge on uh, ways to reactivate MAP kinase signaling. And remarkably, we saw emergence of up to four KRAS mutations in the blood of patients on the MEK116833 study at the time of disease progression. 
mechanisms of primary resistance also seem to, uh, like they may involve inferior suppression of MAP kinase signaling. And this may explain the relative resistance in colorectal cancer as compared to melanoma. So pictured here is the um, change in phospho-ERK levels by immunohistochemistry in tumor biopsies of patients pre-treatment versus at day 14 on treatment. And what you can see is that at the far left, patients with melanoma who were treated with dibrafenib alone had superior suppression of phospho-ERK as compared to patients with colorectal cancer, even those patients at the far right who were treated with the triplet therapy, dibrafenib, trametinib, and panitumumab. So as next steps, um, there's interest in optimizing suppression of the MAP kinase pathway, including with ERK inhibitors. And uh, there's a new class of BRAF inhibitors in development called paradox breakers, an example of which is shown on the right. On the horizon also are BRAF and immunotherapy combinations with several clinical trials in development. And strategies to find novel agents have included recent publications on HMG-CoA reductase as well as the unfolded protein response. So in summary, I recommend always prioritizing clinical trial enrollment whenever feasible. I use first-line fulfoxiri with or without bevacizumab in fit patients. Use anti-PD-1 uh, checkpoint inhibitor therapies in patients with microsatellite in unstable BRAF mutated tumors. I avoid BRAF inhibitor monotherapy and I only use anti-EGFR antibodies on a clinical trial or in the second line with vemurafenib and arenotecan per the NCCN guidelines. To finish, in response to the question, how to approach the patient with a BRAF mutant colorectal cancer, the words that come to mind are with vigilance and forethought, because caring for patients with BRAF mutated colorectal cancers often requires moving very swiftly to plan B. So I'd like to thank you for your attention, to thank all of my colleagues who shared their slides, to all of the clinical trial participants and their families, and also to the NCI and NIH for funding. Thank you.